In this episode, we'll be interviewing Chisong, a pencil artist from Maryland who does incredible hyper-realistic art. So stay tuned. But Megan the Stallion had to go through what she went through because her pain and her trauma is valid. And mm -hmm. in that situation, she was hurt. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your work. So my name is Chisome. Um, I'm from Southern Maryland. <clears throat> I'm Nigerian American, but I was born and raised here in the US. And I started drawing like as early as I can remember, maybe the second grade. Mm -hmm. um, I've always loved to draw people and animals. So I um, started drawing and then I kept drawing throughout middle school, high school. And now as a college student, I draw as a hobby and kind of like a source of income. Um, and it's been great so far. I've been learning a lot about myself. I've been trying new mediums and I've met so many great artists uh, along this whole journey. So yeah. yeah, that's me in a nutshell. When you say you started drawing in second grade, did you like yeah. take classes or you're mostly like self-taught? So I'm mostly self-taught. Um, I went to public school, so we all had to take art classes. And mm -hmm. when I was in those art classes, I just remember um, like my teacher would like say, oh my gosh, your artwork is so good. Like me and my twin sister, we both would draw. So people in like elementary school and middle school recognize us as like the artists. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where that skill came from. I think it's probably like genetics because both me and my twin sister, we draw. Um, so yeah, ever since I was young, my teachers have kind of recognized that. And I never took like formal art class. What are some of your, your favorite artists and like, where do you get your inspiration from? So I get a lot of my inspiration from like photorealism, um, for photorealistic artists, like people who draw portraits. Um, and I get a lot of my inspiration from um, like social media. Mm -hmm. um, so I see a lot of artists on there. There's just so many that I can name. So I'm not even gonna try to name because I don't wanna miss anybody, but uh, a lot of artists from Instagram and then Twitter. Twitter, I feel like is a hub for artists all over the United States and all over the world. So I just love going on social media and discovering new artists. Yeah, that's cool because like, I think I kind of discovered you as well from Instagram. So mm -hmm. that you also found like kind of a community on there. I love yeah. that a lot. So in your art, you like you do photorealism. Do you mm -hmm. have any like themes that you also incorporate in your art? Or yeah. yeah. So um, I love doing photorealism, but when I'm not like doing photorealism, I like to do pointillism, which is a small little dots to form the picture. And I also like to draw flowers. Um, that's like a main theme in some of my artworks. Uh, because I feel like there's just so many different types of flowers and flowers are so beautiful. So I can just always spice up whatever I'm drawing by adding a few flowers like here and there. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up flowers because I have to talk about the Louis Vuitton bag oh. that you painted. <laughs> oh so, <my> gosh. <laughs> so you mostly do pencil art, but I see yeah. that you're like branching out into like other mediums as well. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that and like your customizing bags, things like that. Yeah, so that was just a whole new experience for me. Um, I'm going to be honest, I was so nervous to do it. Um, someone reached out to me and asked me to paint their bag. Mm -hmm. And I was obviously going to say yes, like, because I'm always open to try new things. Yeah. Um, but that was the first, I would say like the first object that I painted. Um, and I just approached it as if it was like a piece of paper or like a blank canvas. So I didn't look at it at it as a bag because I feel like that would be too intimidating. So I just looked at it as like a canvas. And um, yeah, so what I did first, just to prep myself, I used my iPad and I um, like created a drawing, like my original drawing on the bag, a picture of the bag on my right. iPad. And then um, I got the paint and everything. And then I transferred my picture through drawing the picture on the bag. And then I painted over that with acrylic paint. So. That's how everything came together at the end. Yeah, it turned out amazing from Thank what you. I saw, at least on social media. Thank you. Um, is that like, so do you also paint as well? Or is that like the first project you took on? So I paint, but I wouldn't say I'm an, a painter. I would say that I'm more of a color pencil artist and I paint here and there if people request. 
that the Louis V one was the same approach as the Telfar bag. So the Telfar okay. one was the first one I did, first bag. And then the second bag I did was the Louis V one with the flowers. Mm -hmm. um, so both were the, it was the same approach for both. But after doing the Telfar one first, I felt comfortable like, okay, maybe I could start doing bags and other things like right. uh, other objects. So that's why I'm trying to branch out into doing other things other than um, photorealism. Got you, yeah. And I saw that those videos really popped off. So clearly you. <laughs> you can keep going with it. Thanks. You're a public health major. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about like balancing STEM and like art? Like I know those are completely like opposite yeah. spheres. <laughs> so how do you do it? So for me, um, I like, well, first I like to prioritize like school, but sometimes it's kind of hard like working from home because I am home during this pandemic to do school and then also do art. I like to do art first, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> I tell myself like, okay, school needs to be done first and then I can draw. But um, I find ways to like integrate it into my daily lifestyle with school. Like for example, when um, like um, I'm enrolled in a couple courses related to self-care and wellness at school. Mm -hmm. So um, when I do like my educational or health outreach and promotion, I like to talk about art and how that's a form of self-care and wellness. Yeah. So I try to integrate that because I feel like drawing and art is a form of, um, it's like a stress relief basically um, to help with anxiety, um, depression. So yeah, whenever I talk about mental health and self-care, I like to talk about art. Like, what advice would you have for other young girls or um other artists in general like if they're balancing like stem and art or they don't know if they can pursue art because they're in like a field that is more um stem related i think that you should not um limit yourself and don't think that because um you can't like major in art that you can't do art on the side um, right. i never really thought that i would major in art like that wasn't really something i considered um only because I, I'm passionate about public health. So that's what I wanted to do kind of full-time at school. But I also understood that like during my breaks, my holidays and like the weekends, I can draw and always keep that balance in my life. So I would say like for people who are considering like doing both, it's possible. You just have to be good about your time management. Um, you don't want to let your skills die because you are too focused on um, academics like you want yeah. to be able to do both keep your skills and um, succeed in your academics so I think it's possible that is great advice yeah and not letting your skills die <clears throat> that is so powerful actually yeah. because so many people I feel like are really talented but then they don't know how to pursue art because people have told them oh you're not going to make any money you're going to be a struggling artist those are like real concerns but mm -hmm. don't let what people say influence your decision like it's your life and it is possible you just have to really like work hard and keep practicing and getting better at your craft yeah and you're a great example of that yeah my last question or last general question for you would be you've been giving some great advice so what is the best piece of advice that you've been given hmm that's so hard because I feel like I get a lot of advice from people, not even just like artists, but just regular people who I ask like for feedback from. Mm -hmm. But I guess like my, my favorite advice um, from the teacher that I mentioned that taught me in high school um, is just to keep practicing. Like I feel like practice is the only way that you can get better. Um, skills just don't develop overnight. You have to really like cater to those skills and learn new ways to improve your art. So practice does make perfect. I believe that. Um, so yeah, practice is really important. Now we're introducing Hot, Hot Topics. topics. <laughs> we're gonna transition into like some of our more, um, I guess, more relevant questions to, like what's going on in the current climate. And these are also some questions that we've seen based off of our own social media on Black Superwoman Chronicles like what conversations people are having about like black women in society. So for my first question, um, so I noticed on social media that you had that great, incredible portrait of Meg Thee Stallion. 
And I'm sure you've heard a lot about what was going on with her after she was shot. And I think that kind of opened up a lot of conversation within our community um, about people's responses to Black women in pain. A lot of people responded like creating like a joke out of it or created or responded with negativity. So I guess, what are your thoughts about that whole situation? And do you have any thoughts about like um, Black women being vulnerable and our society's current response to that? I think that's a really great question. I'm glad you opened up with that one. But I would say that in society all over the world, not even just in the United States, like patriarchy is kind of just like dominating everything. And it's very unfortunate for the women, not just like um, cisgendered women, but like trans women, queer women. And it kind of, it, it's very unfortunate that Megan the, St- Megan the Stallion had to go through what she went through because her pain and her trauma is valid. And mm-hmm. in that situation, she was hurt by someone who had power over her. Like having a gun is the ultimate weapon. He, whoever killed, uh, whoever shot her, I, I believe it was um, Tory Lanez. A lot of people would say differently, but I definitely believe it was him. Um, he had the power over her because he had a weapon that was lethal. So um, the, the response to that whole situation was very unfortunate because uh, I feel like a lot of people took her pain very lightly. Um, they made her pain a joke. And I feel like that's what a lot of people do when it comes to black women's pain, because they think that black women are strong enough to withstand any pain. And that's what a lot of stereotypes teach us in the media, but it's not true at all. Um, Megan Thee Stallion is a human being just like everyone else. She went through something very traumatic. And I feel like with any person, black, white, um, other, especially black women, we should, we should treat their pain um, and respect the fact that um, they went through something traumatic because it, it's just, it's wrong. That whole situation just got me very upset, but yeah, yeah. I'll just say, I'll just say at the end of the day, it's, it's wrong. And we need to really debunk the myths that we have about black women and our, um, our pain tolerance and how we, we deal with trauma. Mm-hmm. That is so true. And I love what you said about like black women are always like expected to be strong. Yeah. And I feel like that is very true. And there needs to be space for like vulnerability, especially when um, Meg came out and um, shared this experience that was very troubling to her, yeah. but it wasn't really met with like the support or the protection of her community. Exactly. So since Black women especially feel the pressure to always be strong, even in the face of injustice, what are other attributes that Black women can be instead, like something other than strong? Um, I feel like us Black women, um, I feel like strong is a, is a term that can be used to put us in a box. But I mean, it is a good term. Um, I feel like anybody that's considered strong is it's a good thing. But when you overgeneralize strong to all black women, it is dangerous. But other terms that people can use to describe black women, honestly, the terms are endless because I feel like black women are we're not a monolith. Um, right. A black woman can be strong, she can be weak, she can be powerful. But we have to be careful about the words that we choose to use because those words have like um there's an underlining based off of history um based off of what people see us as just to fit their own agenda so um when it comes to character black women can be anything because we have different experiences and we're different people but um when it comes to terms that we use to describe ourselves and what other people use to describe us we shouldn't limit ourselves to the word strong because that can be a little bit dangerous depending on what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. Do you feel like you have a responsibility to speak up and to use your voice or even use your art? Like, I guess, how would you engage? So um, personally, like I do have a personal page um, that I use when it comes to like uh, any like social issue or anything like that. I respond with 
my personal page. But with my art page, I like to just keep it strictly art, mm -hmm. um, but incorporate uh, like social themes. For example, like Black Lives Matter. I'll um, incorporate that with some of the work that I create and then um, figures that are like prominent in Black history and Black culture. Um, but if I were to stumble across, let's say on my art page, if someone brings their negative energy to me that isn't very productive, I will obviously respond and I, I do like check people, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blessed that that hasn't happened, but I feel like maybe like since we're speaking about it, maybe that'll happen in the future and I'll just be ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. This interview invites <laughs> negative okay. energy. I'll be ready. I'll be okay. ready for it. <laughs> All right. You heard it here first. Chisum will check somebody. Yep. <laughs> Try her if you want to. <laughs> Do you have a statement to leave with other aspiring young artists, especially like black female artists? Yeah, um, I would say that if you're a black female artist, just create whatever you wanna create. Don't think that you have to create something the next black female artist does because you feel like that's the only way that you can make it. Like make art that speaks to you, um, take in opinions of others around you because when you're drawing something, you're kind of focused on it, but you don't normally take a step back to look at it. So when you have other people looking at it with their own eyes and their own perspective, um, that can really help advance your work. So take in the opinions of others and just be kind to yourself because a lot of the time people see the final product, but you don't really see what people go through to get to the final product. A lot of the time for me, I, I start something, I don't ever finish. I start something, I mess up, I rip up the paper. And that's fine, like be gentle with yourself. Artwork is not always perfect. No matter how much of a perfectionist that we wanna be, it can never be perfect. So just be gentle with yourself, be open to mistakes and ask people for advice um, to improve your work. All right, thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure having you here. And thank you. I love the advice that you've given us. And I hope that other people who are watching this, that you guys um, also are, feel inspired to continue to create art. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Young Creatives Corner, brought to you by Black Superwoman Chronicles. The artist's information, social media handles, and website will be in the description box below if you'd like to check out more of their work.